My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Monster Train, Monster Train, Monster Train. Uh, we're going to be playing Monster Train and in particular we're going to be doing the Evil Eyes Challenge. That is your units have Permadeath and Heartless. Permadeath means that if a unit dies it gets purged from the deck. Heartless means it cannot be healed. Uh, but on the bright side, everything has googly eyes. We're going to be taking specifically the two clans, Stygian Guard and Hellhaunt. Now, I've chosen these clans specifically... Partly by exclusion, obviously Melting Remnant doesn't seem super relevant here. Uh, you know, ever have a unit burn out and they just get removed from your deck. However, Stygian Guard is one of the strongest clans for setting up on the top floor and having a single floor solution. A single floor solution that can often give you the resilience against any of your units dying because you have some sort of a front line out or you're sapping all of your enemies on every incant or some other effect like that, like giving armor, ridiculous armor to all of your units. Uh, another one of the reasons that we have the Hellhorn is towards that same effect, getting a bunch of armor on units. Obviously, since we're heartless, we can't heal units. So my previous pick, which would have been Awoken uh, for the spell synergies, uh, is not really going to be relevant here. However, there are a couple of upsides that we pick up when we get Hellhaunt in here, and one of the largest ones is the possibility of getting the Relic Railhammer. Whenever you gain any amount of armor, gain plus four. Now, that matters a huge amount because there are Stygian Guard uh, Merchant of Steel upgrades that give you Incant, gain armor. There's units that just straight up have Incant, gain armor. There's a unit that says Incant, give one armor to everyone on this floor. And in this run, assuming we possibly get the Railhammer, that is just give five armor to your whole floor. The exact kind of thing we're going to want to counter both permadeath and hollow. I will also say, these two both seem bad, don't they? Like, you're not getting any benefit. You're just getting a huge, huge detriment. This is going to be a really hard run. Maybe not. Now, permadeath says any non-champion unit which dies is purged from your deck. So all of our train stewards are going to get, like, trashed really, really quickly. However, because we've chosen Hellhorned and we've taken the exiled Hellhorn cards, so will the imps. Which means that very, very quickly, my deck will just be Soul Guard and a bunch of spells. Making it really easy to get into an incant build. Uh, things I don't want to see at the very end. I don't want to see the, the spell destruction. Ooh. Double the Crypt Builder, single Titan Tooth, double Hidden Passage. This is actually extremely good. A <laughs> uh, bunch of lab spells that are going to make it really easy to get some Foregone Power casts off. We're obviously going to be looking for an Offering Token or some such. Similarly, uh, Hidden Passage, so we can overstack the top floor, so we can kind of invalidate needing uh, extra capacity buffs of any kind. This is, this is exciting. This is really good. Uh, rage doesn't decay on friendly units. Doesn't really matter to me much. I'm not going to be building into a heavy rage strategy because of the end boss that we have. And even if I do build into a heavy rage strategy, right? If we get the Nameless Siren and decide to build into that, the Seraph the Chase still usually won't be able to stand up against that, regardless of whether or not I have Collection of Tales. Rules of Containment gives me just a lot of free time early on to get my build together. This is interesting. Stygian Banner, Merchant of Steel. So we've got Cold Channel and we've got Dire Channel. Effectively, we've got a Frontliner and we've got a Backliner, right? So what is it more easy to get as these two clans, a Frontliner or a Backliner? It's easier to get a Frontliner. So we'll take the Backliner here. We're taking Dire Channel. Whew. Sorry about the uh, the, the four-minute talkathon at the very start there. We're about to go into a longer talkathon. But it's more so that there's a, a lot of uh, sudden talking with not, without much gameplay. I understand. It's fine. It happens. Uh, let's go Soul Guard, Imp, Imp. So we can start getting rid of some of these Imps. Perfect. Um, let's go Shiny Suit on the top floor. And then, come on, get him. Got him. Needed a couple more incants here on the bottom floor. Go a shiny suit there. Should be good. 
Mm hmm. Let's go one more steward, one more steward, and then a foregone power. It's worth noting, purged any non-champion unit which dies is purged from your deck. So we don't care that that got purged. Not even slightly, really. Hmm. In fact, ideally, I do want as many of these purged as possible. So I'm actually going to pass here. We've got spells in the deck that will allow us to do this finisher if we needed to. Perfect. So we lose all but one shiny steward here. What a great, great purge method, uh, mechanism we've got going on. Titan's Gratitude. If it wasn't for the fact that I already have five copies of Falcon Power that discard a card at random, so these each cost two cards to play, uh, then I'd probably be more excited about that Titan's Gratitude. Uh, a lot of the discussion that I had with Teak in the Monster Train streaking series, um, a lot of that has been about Titan's Gratitude and value of Titan's Gratitude in comparison to something like Helical Crystallis, which used to be the kind of like default pickup. That Flash Freeze looks pretty good though. It's a target against the backliner. It's Freeze. It's fine. Doesn't have to be everything I need. It's some of the things I need. Imp in a box isn't bad here either, but Vent is also AoE, and I am lacking AoE outside of the single Titan's Tooth. It's not super easy to get AoE in these clans. I'll take the Vent while it's on offer then. Unfortunately, my first pick just has to be the Stygian Guard. Quick incant gain two, and Hearthstone are both there. Oh my god. I wish I could pick both of these. Oh. Baby. Is there a... Hazel's Horde. Hellvent is on the opposite side to a Merchant of Steel Stygian Banner, so I'm not going to be duping the unit that I get here for a very long time. If there was a Hellvent in the second area, the Bogworn Remains, I would take the Offering Monument. I'd pump it with the plus 25. I'd re-roll looking for more plus 25, put that on as well. Uh, and then I would go ahead. Obviously, you know, I'd dupe it in this area, and then I'd go down one more area, try and find a frontliner unit, and cycle out that way. But... Lacking that, I think the correct play here is... Oh, whoa! Obviously, I don't take an offering monument. We have permadeath. Ryan, you... <laughs> you almost made an awful mistake there, bud. Uh, we actually may want to treat the Siren of the Sea as a frontliner here, regardless of whether or not we end up utilizing it as a frontliner. So I'm going to give it the runestone for the plus armor here. I could reroll... I'm going to save my money. I think we're actually already okay. Okay, unit drafts. Sure. More than happy to see a unit draft, especially considering, you know, majority of enemies are going to die by the time they get to the second floor. So it doesn't really matter that much to me. Perfect. Oh, that's not what I wanted to hit. <laughs> Hmm. I'm gonna send y'all. Hit you with every one of these spells. Perfect. The Siren of the Seed does live. I actually didn't suspect it would be that close. <laughs> I was I was certain we were gonna live the entire time. Maybe I shouldn't have been. Offering tokens the easiest take there. Reinforce. Very quickly that will just confirm that a unit will never die. Fine. Oh god, do we take the second Asara of the Sea as the backliner? So, what reasons would we have to do or to not do that? Because I think I'm going to get a better backliner in the Stygian banner down here. You know what? I can afford to take this Siren of the Sea and then remove it if I don't want it. Because we're going Capacity and Talos the Architect if we really want to go for the top floor being Soul Guard, uh, Siren, Siren. We do have two hidden passages. We could try and get away without that. But I don't know if I'd really want to. I'm still going to take it. There are a lot of spells I need to upgrade, and I'm not going to be able to upgrade them for a while, so I may as well do it right now. Oh, gosh. Uh, so I can give this the plus 20, and then I can remove its consume, and then we just have a 20 damage AoE. Zero energy. Okay. 
then the reinforce really wants to roll its cost down. However, yeah, we've got a Forgotten Boons as well as Merchant of Steel. We'll have three, possibly six. No, no, no. Three, removal. Okay, yeah, we've got a lot we need to do with this Merchant of Steel. I think we just take the Concealed Cabins and move on. Uh, actually, it might depend on this. So this is just three extra energy on turn one. But three extra energy on turn one means something to us. It means sometimes cast an extra spell. It means taking draw is a little bit easier. It means uh, there are certain extra units I could draft for just an instantaneous single turn effect. It also means that imp generation via imp in a box is suddenly way better. And I wish I had that now. This Siren of the Sea goes there. That Siren of the Sea goes there. Uh, I mean, I could vent the bottom line, but it, like, really, it just looks like I want to hard cast on that floor as much as possible. Now, yours is the uh, slave, the armor. Got it. Come on and ascend them. Mm, I actually do want you to get to the top floor still. Okay, I can cast a couple things there. I mean, I'm still hitting in can triggers at the absolute least. Here we go. You go to the top floor. Shiny Steward gets removed from the deck. And we are now pretty comfortable, I hope. Yeah, we look pretty comfortable. I mean, look, if that's the best value I'm going to get out of it in this fight, that's the best value I'm going to get out of it in this fight, you know? Point too many. Good to complain about it. Great. I feel like I've pretty effectively demonstrated everything I said in the first four minutes, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Can't take the Transcendent. Siren Song, not awful. Pop a Permafrost on that, and that's not that bad. Zero of these. Unless we had a Nameless Siren already, it's not valuable for us. As I upgrade these Sirens of the Sea, they're going to be easier to ascend. I don't know if that's super true. I know draw is definitely good for us in, like, every circumstance here. So the next area is Merchant of Steel with a Stygian banner. I've been focusing pretty hard on that the entire time. Possibility is that I find a totem there that I want to use instead. But then how do I project damage against the back line? Using my spells? It's good that I have the vent in the deck for that reason then. of Seal has Quick and Incant to gain more armor. There's our backliner if we wanted it. Does this actually change how I play? Do I really want to take that? Or do I just take the one that pumps its stats ridiculously? Because Rage is plus two damage this turn. Decreases each turn. This is plus two damage forever, plus two health as well. Obviously, this has a lot of synergy relics, but having already turned down one of the larger synergy relics for it, maybe I just uh, sit where I am. Okay, this incant is going on the Siren of the Sea. This is now a Siren of the Sea. Like, so the Guard of the Unnamed, right, is oftentimes the premier tank for Stygian. Has incant gain armor three. However, Siren of the Sea has incant gain two health. Which is still pretty damn good. And then I gave it two incants for extra armor. So this is basically two Titans 
uh, two guards of the unnamed rather stuck together and it also does damage <laughs> so it's it's very good uh this siren of the sea in the back line it should get quick and multi-strike it by the ability do not have the ability right now however giving it large stone is not an awful idea right that would make it easier to put on the second floor until i have the time to ascend it to the top Definitely not cold channel because you're not a frontliner, so... I mean, I, I don't know if there's any way that I hybridize this character at all. So, Soul Guard is just going to be dire channel the entire time. At the start of battle, enemy... Yeah. This... This is never relevant to me. <laughs> uh... Oh, man. If I put both sirens and see here and then Soul Guard on the bottom floor and then ascend it, it later. I like that. I like that. So if I killed one of you, 444, four, four, then I use a foregone on power. Honestly, like as much as I I'm gonna kill one of you, and then I'm gonna cast that on the top floor. We've got six cards drawn, we've got two hidden passages in the deck. I think it was fairly likely we were going to be able to get one. Perfect. I mean, I could send y'all to the top floor. Straight up send them. Sure, get sent. It's not like I had any giant benefit from not doing that, right? So... Might as well. One, two. Plus 44 armor on the frontliner. Seems good enough to me. Uh, hidden passage, the backline unit, so it doesn't defend these anymore. <laughs> Perfect discards there to make sure that I got no extra in camp. The only thing that really matters is on this top floor. Like, sorry, the only thing that really matters full stop is on that top floor getting as many incans as possible right now. That's it. And here is the reasoning why. Nice. Guardian's Amulet's going to do nothing in the final fight. Neither will Drain. Otherwise, they would be a lot easier to take. Guardian's Amulet... Still? Eh? Hmm. Yeah. Maybe if I had double stack. Do I have a likely Mercator Magic coming up soon? Got a Merchant of Steel. Unstable Vortex on that side. I'm actually probably going to go to this Merchant of Magic. I might be able to take that Guardian's Amulet and try and double stack it. But I already have another double stack target in the deck in the Fire Song. Sorry, Siren Song, rather. That Harness the Titan could hit a couple of tuned spells in the Crypt Builders, but specifically with all of the Forgones in the deck, it doesn't really seem that good. Hmm. I feel like I want to go to this Merchant of Trinkets and I may end up just saving a bunch of money for it. How much money can I really save? So what upgrades am I looking for? Permafrost, Holdover. Cost decrease, plus 10 magic power. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to skip. Input a box. It's just three energy for zero, as well as just get two imps out on the board. They may have a good effect for you. They may not. Um, it's also a spell that I can cast on any floor quite happily. It's also actually a good consume removal and possibly dupe to Hold over goes on the offering token so we can try and confirm the play of any of these offering spells the inside time. Cost reduction goes on to reinforce, making it a lot easier to play. 
We re-roll found consume removal, which goes on the impeter box. And then I will also re-decrease the cost of that impeter box. Yeah, I just spent a lot more money there than I really wanted to, but we also got a lot more powerful than I needed to. So hmm, kind of works in uh, each way there. Master of Light, Slay, Gain, Rage 2 has four damage. Now, the problem with that is Soul Guard possibly dying after being hit five times with it. That's not going to happen. It's only going to spawn three of them over the course of the fight. There's no risk. There's really, really very little risk, I'll say, actually, instead of none. But there, there's little. Three. Uh, uh, uh. As long as I don't just put these imps on the bottom floor to allow the Master of Light to kill them, I'll probably be fine. Unfortunately, that does mean I need to find out where to put these imps. Uh, they can go on the top floor, can't they? Yep. Why not, right? They'll die to this Master of Light, but so what? <laughs> Is that a problem? Gosh, I wish I was able to hit that collector right now. I don't want to reinforce for zero armor. Yep. It's another spell to cast, basically. You head on up there. And there, the Master of Light is going to kill both of these imps, bring up the space for me. It doesn't even matter if it brings up the space for me, right? Um, but then the Master of Light is easily going to parry. In fact, it's actually going to perish before it even attacks. Which is... So it's good that it uh, doesn't need to be cleared up, right? At that point. Both of those on the top floor. Just doubling camp. It's very good that I have the ability to take the money challenge here. And then we've got forgotten boons as well as the unstable vortex over here. Because this merchant of trinkets, like... If incant seal is there and I can't take it... <laughs> right? It's like... Wow. It's real wow. making sure I was right that that could go up. Good. Now we get the imps dead. Finally. Need that many ascends here. No need for any of those imps. The front line and then vent is already enough for us. The 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 vent. Got foregone power, but good measure. One good reason to have a double siren of the sea rather than nameless siren here as well is because the nameless siren would need some defense applied to it for the sake of sweep units as well as thorns. Uh, whereas these are all like they do not mind at all. That's not necessary. Yep. I'm going to lose Solgar the Mart a bit again. Champion units are not purged. My Simpire has an appeal. I mean, I exclusively set up on the top floor. Meaning it doesn't just have an appeal. It is exactly what I need. Branding right isn't awful either. However, I need it. A little bit. No, 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 no. I'm far better served by just playing a bunch of other spells. No, uh-uh. Don't do that, right? Make a bad decision based on the fact that it said the word armor on it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No incant seal for us. We can re-roll. We may be able to find and play it. Summon ability to trigger an additional time. I wouldn't be entirely opposed to taking that. Got an imp in a box in the deck. But we can't play it on the same floor as almost any of other, uh, uh, our other units ever. So it does become a little harder. 
Uh, also feels like two foregone powers that I remove here. I'm doing it. I think there will be value to this. I might be wrong. Or I guess I think there will be enough value to justify this. Probably the uh, better way I should have explained myself there. Come on, pass it. Donk him. You know what? You get up there too and die. Here's the infinite box. I mean, like, again, still don't want to cast this on the floor. The Master of Light. Guess I can get one of them in the middle floor here. Sort of like get two rage. So actually, it would probably lose. Actually, it would probably die to the Siren of the Sea when it gets to the top floor anyway, so. Let's do everything we can, basically. And can't. Unfortunately, I can't set up a second floor here, so the Arcus is very likely to come to the top floor and just put down the Incant Seal next turn. Don't love that. Love that. Ooh, Impish Scholar returning a reinforce. I would love to do that. Not this turn, though. But that's going to be really good. Not this turn, though. I cannot wait to do that. Not this turn, though. Um, uh, Alting him. Good measure. Ah, back so soon. You simply love to see it. Okay. You found us a reinforce, and that's another 100 armor for us right now, so pretty useful, I would say. Take six damage here, but... The extra incant, I think, is worth it. That's also the first damage I've taken this entire run, I believe. Other than, you know, damage I intentionally traded away at an event, which I don't really think counts. Oh. I love all this extra energy. Don't know what the heck I'm going to do with it, but I love having it. Up. Up. I mean, I should have just cast, uh, cast that on the in-camp floor because it really doesn't matter, right? Perfect. All right, Arcus, what do you got? Down and... We collect our kill. Mm. If it wasn't for the Seraph the Chase at the very end, I may take that spike to Stygian. That reinforce doesn't look too bad either. Ancient Synergy is some of the most consistent frontline damage we have access to, but only if I really get the ability to upgrade it soon. Merchant of Steel, I'm not going to be going on that side. I'm going to be going for the Hellvent, the Unstable Vortex. So what am I going to be Hellventing? I mean, Impotent Box is not a bad Hellbent right now. It's actually quite good. Am I overvaluing that Impotent Box? Hang on. What's it actually doing for us? Huh? What do we get out of it? Well, we get a second floor. The second floor splits off half of the debuffs that Seraph the Chase tries to do, but Seraph the Chase's debuffs do not actually affect my floor. Um, seeing as armor is not considered a buff. 
Neither are the stat increases. Maybe it's nothing. Did they have a nothing here? Have we already outscaled the Seraph fight? Yes. Uh, do we need more frontline damage in the early couple of rounds? Maybe, but probably not. Where are we going in the final area? Merchant of Steel, Merchant of... The Merchant of Steel has another Hellbent. I hate that that's on that side. I would have loved to go to the Merchant of Magic with the Hellbent. Well, hang on. Let's let's make a faster decision, right? What is my next pickup? Is it draw or is it energy? I think it's draw. If we intend on duping the imps, then the imps are actually energy for us, and then we take draw here. Right? And the imps being energy for us, how does that help us? Make Spike of the Stygian more takeable? It does, but it's still before Seraph chased. Reinforce slightly more playable. Taking the money. Two draw relics. You know it's a rhapsody run when you see uh, the double blue relic up there. It's the only way to know it's a rhapsody run. Um, cuts. A foregone power. I do not want to cut both of them, but I do want to continue thinning down the deck. It may be that I cut a Crypt Builder here. No, but they're going to be easier to cast now. It's the foregone power is costing us two cards. Unless those hit in a tune, like that's, that's like a real hard whiff a lot of the time for us. I can even dupe the offering token. I'm not going to, but I could, but I won't. But if I did, I would have. But I won't, so I can't. None of these are necessary. Not even slightly. Alright, imps. Let's go Dire Channel as well. Number centimeters units restore all health when you build for floor. We've got hidden passages to deassemble those steel wings. Unfortunately, the purifiers are actually going to give us a little bit of hassle here. I am still going to have to set up on the top floor, so that is probably going to be the largest problem I face. Those purifiers. Quick, it's not where I want you to be. Hidden passage. Soul Guard's got 40, so it can stand up. So what? I just put this Siren of the Sea here, and then Soul Guard there. Titan Sooth is good enough here on the bottom floor at the moment. Cast two spells on the top floor. Perfect. That is, in fact, exactly how I needed this to go. <laughs> Something for nothing, then another spell for nothing, and we're already set. Maybe I could have cast the vent on the bottom line for the uh, purifier. Okay, love these hits on Impeter Box. Let's Hidden Passage to Ascend you so that I don't have to fight to get to you. Use a... Pyre Chomper for the extra energy, and then a Molten in each of these cases just to clear. Let's set up a slightly more resilient bottom floor there. We're going to take some damage here on top floor. <laughs> it's a fair whiff of damage right there. I'm happy to throw out that reinforce already. Also make sure we don't have to draw another Scourge. Okay. In passage you away. In passage you away. Definitely can't use a Crypt Builder because I don't want to miss. I would love to Siren Song here, but I really don't want to heal up that uh, Guild of the Wing. 
40. Yeah, no, it, it needs the data. Alright, input the box. Yes! If I started getting like uh like if the input box it's it's a one percent chance I believe to give you transcendent. But if I get a transcendent from it, we just go off. This run's going off like last month's milk. It's perfect. It's much of a mixed metaphor right there. <laughs> but <laughs> I trust it comes across correctly. Uh, hit those two. And yeah, we're totally, totally dumping. I don't love all these imps just powering up the bottom line here. But I, I do imagine it will not be a concern. Oh, there's the transcend imp. Oh, there's the impish skull. Okay, so uh, we play the impish fledgling and then transit. Yeah, so impish gives us reinforce. I use the reinforce on the top line. Then I'm going to trans no, and then I'm going to fledgling, giving me the energy back. I'll use a transcend him here as well. Getting actually, you know what? Hang on, uh, ice and fire. Okay, it's not gonna help. There we go. There's some frostbite on you. Uh, but more importantly, boom, the imp floor gets the kill. I didn't even need that top floor. Why do I have any units in this deck? Should have just gotten the imps. Hard pass. I mean, I don't have a problem with another Impeter box, especially one that consumes, because then I have two consuming cards in the deck. So the uh, the Impish Scholar gives me back both of them because of the summon double buff. Um, actually, how how desperate are my spells for upgrades, or do I want another dupe? Because I could hit another dupe happily. It's probably another box. Yeah, it's probably another box, and then we run a secondary floor. Another box and running a secondary floor is not a bad thing. Endless in camp plus two. Got it. We may find Pyre Stone housing here. When you play your third spell of a turn, all cards gain plus one magic power with the rest of the fight. So that's five extra damage on the Crypt Builder every single time, but like it's kind of insignificant for a lot of these. It's a chance to apply silence whenever an enemy unit senses your train. I actually care about that one. Wow, we hard whiffed on relics. Like, yeah, we got the Ashes of the Fallen, and then we pivoted into it, right? It's not like we already had support for it. But all of these, wow. Uh, The really, really annoying thing here is that there's basically nothing that I want to buy. Like, removals? Sure, remove what? I can get down to a deck that is just imp, imp. Actually, you know what? Yes. Let's go back to removals. Because there are cards that are in this deck that are fine, but I don't need them. That siren song is increasingly not good. What if I got a second offering token? I don't think it's worth as much as the imps. The extra chance at getting a transcend imp that then just takes over the entire floor. All right, so have the chase. I'm going to take the perfect amount of money too. Start out by setting myself up here on the top floor. Oh, there's a transcend imp already. I may want to leave that to cycle through the deck a couple times here. 
Because that's going to be worth its weight in gold eventually. In fact, worth a lot more than its weight in gold. Matter of a lot. One more hidden passage in this hand. We found it. So the Siren of the Sea goes to the floor. Then we can get in Passage. Uh, I should have played the Imps earlier. That's my bad. Oh, never mind. Okay, we got a Pyre Chomper. Everything's fine again. I'll, I'll get the ability to bring that card back soon. It's fine. Having all these floors splits the Seraph between going to multiple of these floors. Although it doesn't do anything to the top floor, so it doesn't matter to split them, but it's doing it, I guess, is my point. <laughs> Easily done. There's our Transcendent back for another round. But I wish I had space up here, but even if I went double draw gem, we wouldn't have had space up here, right? So when I say, sorry, double draw gem, I, I meant double capacity gem, but even in saying a sentence about the capacity gems, I replaced them with draw gems. That is the extent of it here. I've been all around the block with the, the, the kind of draw gem meta. Uh, discussion that's been evolving recently. Like, from apologetic, like, oh, sorry, I, I'll try and not do it as much, to kind of cycling back around and going, no, but it worked. <laughs> so at least at this point, I do have, like, a, a, a gut check that I do every time that I take one, but I still feel like I need to take it. That's so good. Okay. It's fine. The vent kills the frontliner anyway. Perfect. There we go with the third cycle of that Transcendent. Waves are oh, okay. We finally got the Impish Skull. It's actually going to the Transcendent. Now I feel real good about this. So, Fledgling. Impish gets us back an Impeter Box as well as the Reinforce. Reinforce goes on the top line. We use the Impeter Box. Hmm. Get him, Transcend him. We also now have infinite energy, which, I mean, that's okay, I guess. It's a lot of energy, you know? Helper, and then Fledgling, Fledgling, Fledgling. Just build a decently powerful bottom floor, I guess. This Reinforce goes on the midline now. We are just killing with the, uh, <laughs> the Imps. In fact, I am now overwhelmed with imps. Because my frontline imps are not dying anymore. Thank heck, the back ones have uh, really taken up the charge and are now dying a bunch. Really making it easier on me. I have a lot of imps and need to actually be able to play some of them to the field here. Okay. So all the helper. Fine. Did those in the wrong order entirely. I'm just curious. How's this floor gonna go? Wow, it's gonna die. Huh. I am pretty surprised by that, I think. No, it got purged at a time, I guess. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. That said, the next floor kills, so it's not... <laughs> it's not like it's a giant issue, you know?
Oh my god. Even at ultra speed. Taking a fair bit of a while here. Alright, perfect. Yeah, 120. Nowhere even close to what you would have needed. GG, Sarah. G. G. Turns out being able to remove all of your train stewards and uh, all of your allied clan starter cards at the start of a run turns out to make a Stygian run very powerful. Who would have known? Best clan in the game is Stygian slash Stygian. Well, okay, hang on, sorry. Second best clan in the game is Stygian slash Stygian. First best clan in the game is Dante slash Dante with a Dante type champion and some Dante buffs going on. Let's have a look at this run summary and pop up the shareable challenge version of it while I say that my name has been Rhapsody and the name of the game has been Monster Train, Monster Train, Monster Train. <sighs> I, I, I recently have had the uh, the Americas move in terms of their daylight savings, and uh, the month prior, Australia moved in terms of their daylight savings. So specifically, it was the United States of America that I know moved uh, in terms of their daylight savings just at the start of this month, and we did the month prior, right? So I think at the end of this month, uh. Canada is probably also gonna like just just looking globally in terms of geography right Australia did it and then America did it and then I guess if we're moving northwards Canada's probably gonna do it at the start of the next month right but they don't call it daylight savings time because there's not a huge amount of daylight that far north right they used to call it daylight savings times but it didn't make sense so they've called it maple timing since for the moment, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Monster Train. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.